My name is Peter Allison and I'm a resident of Brisbane. Today I want to talk about an LED streetlight trial currently being conducted by Brisbane City Council and electricity distributor Energex. The trial commenced in September 2016 and was due for completion about September 2018. It's now late October 2018 uh, and there's no sign of a trial report yet. Contrary to what Brisbane City Council might think, I do actually support the move to LED street lighting in Brisbane. However, the lights that are chosen need to be well designed, uh, well suited to the task and properly installed. I believe there are some serious deficiencies in the design and conduct of the Brisbane LED street light trial. I believe these deficiencies will negatively impact multiple aspects of the amenity of Brisbane residents. If Council and Energex make decisions for the Brisbane-wide rollout of LED street lighting based upon this flawed trial. I came upon this topic of LED street lighting because I'm an amateur astronomer. Initially I took an interest in the topic because I thought a move to LED street lighting might impact my hobby. But when I started to research the topic I realised there were much bigger implications for Brisbane residents. And it was that point that I got serious about researching the topic. Brisbane, like most local authorities, has a very attractive carrot dangled in front of it by LED manufacturers. You know, that carrot is the cost saving uh, and greenhouse gas and environmental benefits uh, that LED street lights can potentially deliver to local authorities. However, there have been many examples in the United States, Europe, the UK, where authorities have moved very quickly to deploy LED street lighting without doing enough uh, due diligence on the design and performance of the lights they've installed. The consequence of that have been plenty of examples where local authorities have got it wrong, installed inappropriately designed street lights, upset a lot of residents and generated a lot of bad press for their local authority and in many instances incurred additional costs in needing to reverse their rollout and find better designed lights. I'm concerned because I think this is the path that Brisbane City Council is also headed down and I'd like us to avoid that. So just to set the scene, this trial of LED street lighting in Brisbane is for Category P streets and Category P streets are where people live uh, they're not the main arterial uh, roads and motorways in Brisbane. They are the responsibility of Main Roads Department. Category P streets are suburban streets where 99.9% .9 of Brisbane residents live. So if bad decisions are made on LED light deployment in these residential streets, they will certainly have an impact on resident amenity. Brisbane City Council, like all local authorities, place great stock in complying with the Australian standards for not only lighting but almost any other infrastructure they invest in. That's a good thing if the standards are well crafted and compliance is properly achieved. So just looking at the Australian standard for Category P lighting, uh, we can see what that uh, standard is looking for. So first off, the standard for Category P lighting says the role of street lighting uh, is to assist pedestrians to orient themselves and detect potential hazards. The standard says the lighting also needs to be designed to protect the integrity of the nighttime environment through control of light spill and glare. The standard also says that street lighting in Category P streets is not there for the benefit of vehicles and vehicle drivers. Vehicle drivers need to use their headlights to drive in these streets. So Category P lighting is there for the benefit of pedestrians. I obtained a copy of the, the trial documentation compiled by Brisbane City Council and Energex which sets out how this trial will be designed and conducted. However, the documentation provides very little guidance to manufacturers as to what Brisbane City Council and Energex were trying to achieve with the trial, other than perhaps simple compliance with the standard. When you read through the documentation, really what it says to manufacturers is just show us what luminaires you've got. There's nothing in the documentation that signifies the importance of resident amenity issues. There's nothing in the documentation about control of glare or light trespass into properties. Nothing about upward waste light control. 
nothing about colour temperature and blue wavelength control, and nothing about adaptive control of network luminaires to reduce energy consumption at times when lighting is less required. So really the documentation behind this trial, really it's a show us what you've got uh, call to manufacturers. So first off, the documentation says that any luminaires offered up for trial must be designed to illuminate 20 metre wide road reserves. Now that's a, that's a limitation in itself right there. Many of the older streets in Brisbane are much narrower than that, down to 10 and 12 metres wide. And in fact, many of the new subdivisions, the design standards there say road reserves can be as narrow as 14 metres wide. So conducting this trial with luminaires that are only suited to 20 metre wide road reserves sets the trial up for a later problem of how to accommodate narrower streets. The documentation also says that any luminaire offered for trial needs to be capable of being installed with a five degree upcast or, or tilt above the horizontal and they have to be able to uh, mate with a pre-existing spigot uh, which is installed on the, the brackets and poles uh, operated by Energex. So again, straight away we have a clash with the ability to control waste, uplight and glare through the requirement that all luminaires need to be capable of being installed with a 5 degree up tilt. One of the biggest problems with the specification for this trial was the requirement that luminaires must weigh 4.9 kilos or less for inclusion in the trial. Eventually this limitation was lifted to 5 kilos. I sat across the table from a senior Energex engineer and asked how were the 10 final uh, luminaires selected for trial uh, selected and he explained that about 30 luminaires were offered up for trial but only the 10 that weighed 5 kilos or less were accepted for inclusion in the trial. So really the 10 make and model of luminaires that are being trialled are there just because of how much they weigh nothing to do with how well they control glare or what colour temperature they operate at or how well they control light trespass into neighbouring properties. It's just how heavy they are. If they're five kilos or less, they're in the trial and that's how the 10 was selected. The documentation for the trial says that manufacturers also need to provide luminous intensity tables uh, for their uh, luminaires. So those tables would tell Energex and Council in advance of the trial how well these lights would perform in terms of controlling uh, glare into neighbouring properties. But it doesn't seem this information was used in the selection of trial luminaires. The principal criteria was just how much they weighed. I did manage to get uh, Council and Energex representatives to come along to a public consultation meeting and for that meeting I gave them about four questions in advance that we'd like them to answer. One of which was, can you tell us what the evaluation criteria will be that each of the trial luminaires is tested against uh, to eventually find the best performing luminaires for rollout across Brisbane? Unfortunately, in the consultation meeting, we never heard what those evaluation criteria are. Uh, I followed up in writing to Council, again asking what the evaluation criteria were, but we never got an answer. So eventually, Council and Energex ended up selecting 10 make and model of luminaires for trial, principally based on how heavy they were. A total of 100 luminaires across those 10 make and models were deployed across Brisbane in 17 trial streets. I visited all 17 of those streets by day and night and evaluated the performance of the lights against some criteria that are actually missing from Council and Energex uh, trial documentation, but I thought important, uh, particularly for aspects of protecting aspects of resident amenity. So those criteria that I looked at in particular were the colour temperature of the lights, uh, how bright they were, whether they were installed properly, how, they, how the lights managed to control the distribution of light, and in particular control of light trespass into neighbouring neighboring properties, uh, glare control and the timing and control of lights uh, through the night when demand for lighting uh, changes. 
You can find a lot of information from the results of my evaluation on YouTube. If you search in YouTube for Brisbane LED streetlights, you'll find a whole bunch of uh, videos there which look at a number of the individual trial streets and the make and model of LEDs that were being trialled in those streets. And you can see uh, detailed evaluation of those lights and what I thought of them. So that's the quickest and easiest way to see the, the full detail of what I thought about the conduct of this trial. The Australian standard for Category P street lighting tells local authorities that they need to install lights that will deliver the highest colour rendering uh, possible. The standard says that the colour temperature of lights, uh, particularly LED luminaires, should not be higher than 4000 Kelvin. When you look at the 10 make and model of luminaires on trial, 9 of the 10 luminaires are 4000 Kelvin or higher, and one of the make and models operates at 4500 Kelvin and another one operates at 6000 Kelvin. So straight away those two lights uh, exceed uh, the specification of the Australian standard for colour temperature. So why were luminaires of 4,500 and 6,000 Kelvin even trialled? <laughs> They're just not acceptable under the standard. And only one luminaire uh, operated at 3,000 Kelvin uh, was included in the trial. So it's disappointing that a wider range of lower colour temperature luminaires were, were not trialled um, in this trial. Um, to see how they perform for uh, lighting for pedestrians in residential streets. This shows the result of just one piece of research amongst many, many uh, research projects looking at colour rendering and how people perceive colour uh, either correctly or incorrectly depending on the colour temperature of the light they're operating under. In this case, um, test subjects were shown 15 different colour chips and asked to rank them in correct order and identify the colours uh, of each chip under different lighting. And it shows that at 3000 Kelvin, people were accurate at 90, 95 and 100% uh, in terms of identifying the colour and, and discriminating between different colour chips under 3000 Kelvin lighting almost identical to what people can achieve with 4000 Kelvin lighting. So really for pedestrian lighting there is no need to go to 4000 Kelvin. 3000 Kelvin is just fine in terms of colour rendering for Category P streets. The next criteria I looked at was the brightness of uh, the trial luminaires in each of the streets. I had no way to accurately meter uh, the illumination levels of these uh, luminaires, all I could really do was make a subjective assessment. But in my assessment of walking these streets by night, uh, I felt nine of the ten make and model of luminaires were actually quite uncomfortable to walk under, and, and some of them extremely uncomfortable to walk under. In some instances I found I needed to squint, look down at the ground, and in some cases even shield my eyes from the luminaires because the, they were so bright and glare can be part of the problem here as well. So just on brightness alone, I think there is a safety issue with these trialled uh, luminaires for pedestrians. I found it difficult to look into the shadows because the lights were so bright, the shadows ended up just black, you couldn't see into the shadows and the lighting in most cases wasn't conducive to walking upright with your head up and, and scanning the street ahead of you. You just ended up looking down at the ground to try and shield your eyes from the bright lights. So I really do believe there's a serious problem with excessive brightness of just about all of these uh, luminaires in the trial. Another big problem with the trial was the way the luminaires were installed. So the luminous intensity data sheets that manufacturers provide for their luminaires all specified for horizontal installation of the luminaire. It's only when the luminaire is horizontal that you can actually predict where the footprint of light will fall on the road reserve or outside the road reserve. The moment a luminaire is installed at some other angle beyond horizontal, those tables are virtually useless. Out of the 100 luminaires that were trialled uh, across Brisbane, I found 90 of those 100 were not installed horizontal. In some cases, 
They were installed at a, a five degree up tilt, but some of them were as high as 15 degrees and more up tilt. And this was even when Luminaires incorporated a hinge in the mechanism to allow them to be easily adjusted to the horizontal. They were still installed with an up tilt. Uh, I cannot fathom why that would be. So the poor installation of these trial luminaires just compounds the glare problem, compounds the light trespass problem and compounds the light pollution that will come from poorly selected and poorly installed LEDs. How Council can actually make a clear assessment of the performance of a luminaire when it's not installed properly is beyond me. I can't fathom how you can do that. So really, I think just the installation of these luminaires makes a mockery of the trial. It's a serious failure in, in performance of the trial. This should not have happened. So poor installation of a luminaire will contribute to the inability of, of luminaires to confine light to the task area, being the road reserve. Just about all the luminaires in the trial have a serious problem with the control of light trespass into neighbouring properties. And this is exacerbated when the luminaire is installed with an up tilt. So forward light trespass across the road reserve into homes was usually poorly controlled uh, by the trial luminaires and in some cases even rearward light trespass was a problem. So looking at the documentation uh, that Council and Energex had for the trial, the documentation shows that each luminaire was going to be assessed with five measurements of uh, illumination uh, on the road reserve, one directly under the light, one 20 metres either side of the light uh, along the road reserve, one at the property boundary behind and one at the property boundary across the road reserve. So there was actually no measurement of the extent of light trespass beyond the road reserve into properties across the street or behind. So at the end of this trial, Council and NGX will have no data on the extent of the ability to control or not uh, light trespass from these make and model of luminaires. So how are they going to make a decision on which luminaires perform best on control of light trespass? They've got no data. They can't do it. So again, this makes a mockery of the trial. We even had instances such as this, this uh, home here where Residents complained to council very soon after the trial commenced that their children living in this upstairs bedroom were kept awake by the excessively bright uh, LED streetlight being trialled outside their home. So council actually sent an inspector out there, took some measurements, uh, concluded that in fact yes, there is a, a light trespass problem into the bedroom windows. But then they informed the residents that they would do nothing about it because they couldn't put any shielding around these lights because that would interfere with their ability to take those five measurements of illumination levels along the road reserve. So as a consequence, the residents of this home were just told, well, sorry, you're just going to have to cop it for the next two years of the trial. However, it gets worse than that. Uh, council documentation shows that at the end of the trial, uh, all trial luminaires will remain in place uh, until they ultimately fail and these LEDs are designed to last 15 or 20 years. So if people in a trial street have a problem with poorly designed LEDs uh, located out, outside their home, they're going to be stuck with them for the next 15 or 20 years. Council's not going to do anything about it. So in terms of looking after the amenity of residents of Brisbane, it's just been a case of total neglect by Council and Energex. Just very poor form. So the next criteria I looked at was glare. It was only the one luminaire that operated at 3000 Kelvin that I didn't feel had an excessive glare problem. You could actually look up at the LED array in that light without being totally dazzled and blinded. But the other nine make and model of luminaires had varying degrees of bad to extremely bad glare. None of the luminaires incorporated any form of shielding of the LED array. Usually they're just flat bottomed, which exposes the LED array to pedestrians, drivers, even residents uh, along the street and contributes substantially to glare. When you look at the 
10 make and model of luminaires in the trial, six of the 10 are type 4 luminaires and only four are type 6. So type 4 are luminaires which actually cast, even when they're installed horizontally, they still cast up to 8% of their light above the horizontal into the sky, which is just a total waste of light. And that just cuts across what the Australian standard says, that the lights sh should be designed to protect the night environment. So immediately, six of the 10 luminaires in this trial perform badly on environmental criteria of wasting energy. And again, throwing 8% of the light into the sky is just going to exacerbate glare and light pollution and light trespass into homes. Only four of the trial luminaires are full cutoff, but even these full cutoff lights uh, contribute to glare. So even when a Type 6 luminaire is installed horizontal, a significant proportion of its light is cast into the glare zone between about 70 and 90 degrees from the nadir below the light. So this glare zone is a real problem for pedestrians and drivers. And it also contributes to the problem of discomfort for residents in their homes. So the poor installation of unshielded luminaire designs resulted in this trial failing badly on glare control and control of light pollution. This is not good enough from Australia's largest council. The trial also did not include uh, any exploration of adaptive control systems for dimming lights in the early hours of the, the morning when street lighting is barely required from, in most instances for uh, pedestrian movement in the streets. So again, this would be a major way for Brisbane City Council to reduce another aspect of its greenhouse gas uh, production, uh, but it's not included in the trial. I think that's a, a, a major omission. So in summary, I believe the trial was poorly designed and conducted. I believe it largely ignores the potential for negative impact on multiple aspects of resident amenity in Brisbane. Council and Energex should have explicitly incorporated aspects of resident amenity, such as control of brightness, glare, light trespass and blue wavelength control. However, all of these were ignored in the trial. I believe instead of Council and Energex just asking manufacturers to show us what you got in LED luminaires, Council and Energex should have sought out well-designed LED luminaires and looked for those that can control light trespass on different road reserve uh, widths, lights that can control glare, lights that do operate at a colour temperature which are comfortable for pedestrians and, and residents and lights that can be in installed easily horizontal and lights that do not contribute to waste, uh, upward light and light pollution. So there should have been a wider range of lower colour temperature luminaires to see how they perform, whether at 2800 or 3000 Kelvin. They should also have sought LEDs that incorporate shielding of the array to help control glare and better control uh, light spill and trespass onto properties. And they should also have sought luminaires that are better designed for different road widths. So whether it's 10, 14 or 20 metres. And that, that would then give Council and Energex sort of a library of luminaires that they could ultimately choose from uh, to deploy depending on the road reserve that they're going to deal with eventually. I also believe Council and Energex should have made better use of the technical data sheets that were supplied by manufacturers. Many of the luminaires that were put in the trial should never have been trialled in the first place and they could have been identified just from the technical data sheets. So I would really like to see Brisbane City Council and Energex repeat the trial. Go out and find the best performing luminaires from manufacturers around the world. Go through the technical data sheets. Select a small number of those luminaires which are going to address many of the problems I've identified here and protect resident amenity and do the trial again. Again, if you want more detail on what I found in this trial, go to YouTube and search for Brisbane LED streetlights. There's plenty of information there. So thank you and I hope Brisbane City Council and Energex are listening.